now moving on to termination management. So under termination management, we have two kinds of termination. We have voluntary and also involuntary. So voluntary form, the voluntary form of termination, that's essentially where the employee itself um, is sort of leaving the business. So they're voluntary leaving, they're voluntarily leaving the business. Um, and then involuntary is where the employee is involuntarily leaving the business. So it might have been catalyzed. The decision might have been catalyzed by the business itself, given their situation or um, the actions of the employee. Um, and so therefore, by force, they are required to um, seize their employment with the business and leave the business or yeah and they sort of um yeah stop working their job okay so under voluntary we have resignation and retirement so this is where the employee is voluntarily leaving the business and then involuntary we have redundancy and dismissal so we'll go through each of these ones so resignation these are our voluntary forms of termination but resignation is where an employee leaves the workplace usually to go to another job. So often um, this happens if, you know, an employee receives a better job offer um, with another business. So for example, maybe if you were working at, um, trying to think of something. Yeah, if you were working at Apple um, and, you know, you receive an amazing offer from Microsoft with a better salary, a better, you know, package, you know, they give you a company car, um, all of that, that's more likely, you know, the, that employee might be motivated to join Microsoft because they're not currently getting that at Apple. And so then they would resign from Apple and then go and start their job at Microsoft. But they're consciously and voluntarily making that decision to leave the workplace um, and that often occurs to get to go to another job. So with resignation you will need to be aware of the like transition issues and entitlement issues as well. So the entitlement issues so there needs to be a period of notice to be given so usually like depending on the contract of the employee Maybe, you know, they have to give three weeks of notice before they, uh, yeah, before they go and leave another job. So they have to give three weeks of notice um, with, when they hand in their resignation letter before, like, going and working at another company. An exit re interview is also recommended. So some companies, when an employee resigns, they have an exit interview, which sort of tries, they collect information um, around why the employee is leaving, um, you know, sort of trying and getting that information why, um, yeah, that employee is leaving, sort of their motivations behind leaving, etc. And then we have retirement. So retirement occurs when an employee decides to leave the paid workforce. So they're leaving the paid workforce altogether. So they're literally, yeah, they're not going to be working um, and getting paid for it. But yeah, they're retiring. So usually they cease to um, they cease to work for another company after retirement. So they the if an employee retires, they're entitled to include accrued entitlements, um, as with resignation. So that might be accrued annual leave or um, you know, long service leave, things like that. Um, so all of the annual leave that they have not used, they're entitled to have that paid back to them. Yes. So another key thing, do not get these, these terminology mixed up. So resignation is where an employee leaves the workplace. Okay. Um, but retirement is when they leave the paid workforce. So don't say that resignation is where an employee leaves the workforce because that's incorrect. They're just leaving one workplace. So think of workplace like the business. Um, workforce as more so like 
the actual like working in general so they're not going to be working anymore um, and getting paid for it all right and then we have our involuntary forms of termination so we have redundancy redundancy is termination of employment by an employer because the employer no longer needs a particular job to be done or needs fewer people for the type of job that is the job no longer exists so it's literally the main idea of redundancy is that the job that an employee was hired for no longer exists or you know like yeah no longer exists for that particular business or it's like removed and therefore that employee is made redundant so they um are no longer needed essentially since that job is no longer needed so some causes of redundancy that could be because of restructuring of the business and so maybe that business in particular goes undergoes some major restructuring and therefore they might get rid of some jobs that you know they know they don't really see that as value to their business it could even be because of technology so maybe some Forms of technology have replaced employees. So, for example, if you think of like Coles and supermarkets, there has been in recent years a major like introduction of self serve checkouts, and therefore there hasn't been a need for employees to be actually like scanning through all the checkout items. And so, um, maybe because of that form of technology, a lot of employees working at supermarket stores in the recent years have been made redundant because they're no longer needed to check out since customers can do that through a self serve checkout. But yeah, that's just one instance of how, you know, technology um, has made people redundant. But yeah, you're going to see, I feel like that's a hot topic of discussion because, you know, the form of AI and all of, all of these things, um, you know, the prediction that they can actually impact jobs and replace a lot of jobs that you know humans um actually yeah a lot of jobs for us people and employees um what am i trying to say yeah that's sort of yeah ai and replacing jobs that's basically the gist of um redundancy and yeah in future years a lot of people might be made redundant because of the introduction of ai and ai actually replacing um jobs okay and then also the last cause of redundancy could be, you know, when the business must urgently save costs um, and is bankrupt. So, yeah, if the if the business is, um, you know, not doing so great financially, has a lot of debt, they are going to really want to try and save costs and expenses. And therefore, they're going to let off a lot of people. They're going to, you know, try and really downsize their workforce um, to avoid to save on those expenses and um, to reduce those labor costs. Cool. Redundancy case studies. So an example is Holden's 2020 shutdown. So Holden is being closed by General Motors, but what happens to its current owners and employees? So while Holden Manufacturing seized in Australia in 2017, it wasn't until February 2020 that the whole brand shut down. Holden has been posting record loss, low sales before its parent company, General Motors, pulled the pin. 185 dealerships in Australia closed down 600 people being made redundant. So you can see how like a business being shut down really impacts its employees. Like 600 people were made redundant. Like they had to find new jobs. Um, and so that is quite a significant um, a significant number of people. Um, but yeah, with your case study, remember it has to be within the last four years. So if you use um, a case study that is exceeds, that is from like 2015, that is, you you would get no marks for that. So it has to be within the last four years. Okay, then we have dismissal. This is another form of involuntary termination. It is involuntary termination due to incompetence or indiscipline. So business must have taken disciplinary procedures before dismissal. It's not taken lightly. Um, and if you are unfairly dismissed, there are a number of steps that you can take with Australia to restore your employment rights. So, yeah, dismissal is literally being fired from your job, but it is like a business, like firing someone in the business is not as easy as it sounds. Like the business has to prove that they've taken 
like disciplinary procedures and they've taken like steps um, before the dismissal. Um, but if an employee continues to act with incompetence and indiscipline, um, then they will be dismissed. So they're given warnings. The employee is given warnings. If they are not really complying with the business's policies or procedures, business has to prove that they've, you know, taken those procedures. Um, but if the, if the employee continues to act in that manner, then they're going to be um, dismissed. However, there are some instances where employees feel like they've been unfairly dismissed and that's where they can sort of escalate that um, and sort of voice their concern with that matter um, to Fair Work, the Fair Work Commission um, to sort of um, address their employment rights because, yeah, it's illegal to be unfairly dismissed and sort of a business firing someone um, with no reason to do so. So that's why it's, it's not taken lightly. Okay. Now looking at the entitlements of each of these forms of termination, redundancy pay. So obviously this is relevant to redundancy, but when an employee is made redundant, they're entitled, they're legally entitled to redundancy pay. So this is where employees receive um, redundancy pay based on their continuous period of service with their employer and employees base rate is of pay is used to calculate redundancy payment. So this is this requirement, like this legal requirement is quite important because the employee is involuntary sort of terminated like from their employment. And so they need some sort of support to, um, you know, in their own life to continue um, supporting themselves and their family um, until they get like a new job. And so that's sort of why redundancy pay is really important as a legal requirement with redundancy. There's also notice of termination. So that is relevant for resignation and also redundancy. So with redundancy, the business must provide written notice um, of the day of termination. So yeah, provide, let the employee know when the termination will happen. And then with resignation, the employee must alert employer of the date they intend to resign. Um, and so they have to also apply sort of comply to their contract because, um, yeah, the employee has to give sort of like three, it depends on the contract. Sometimes it's three weeks, sometimes it's four weeks, sometimes it's six weeks, depending on where they work. Um, but that notice of termination just means that that employee has to continue working with the business um, for that amount of period before they can go to the next, um, their other business that, they've, that they're being recruited by or they're leaving to go to. And then payment of accrued long service leave. So that applies to all types of termination. So as long as the employee continuously works at, worked at the business for at least seven years.